Why'd you let him get two butts in when you were, ha- were thinking boot? about a breakup? Two butts in breakfast? Oh my no, no, no. Lord. Hey, what up? How you doing? Where you been? You hydrated? Wear a helmet, please. Welcome to another episode of Guys We it's the anti slut shaming podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show. Do you want to email us? Oh, you do. It's sorry about last night show at gmail.com. Today's subject line Halloween date from hell hurt me beyond belief hours before I was going to dump him. Ah, oh, don't you hate that? Well, that's interesting that he would even have the power to hurt you if you were going to dump him anyway. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, greetings, Corinne, Christina, and Mike. OG f- here. Thank you for being the trailblazers that you are. If I hadn't been listening to guys we the duration of my 11-year relationship, I don't think I'd be as safe and smart in dating as I am today. Thank you. With that, let's get into the insanity that was Halloween 2023. My name is, yeah, my name is Monica. Fine, you on the podcast, cool. I'm a 34-year-old female living in Colorado with a love for Halloween as deep as Corinne's. I was incredibly intentional about Halloween this year, buying party tickets and assembling my dominatrix Barbie costume months in advance. I nice. committed so hard to this costume that I literally dyed my hair black. In April, 2023, I matched with this doctor. We'll call him not awesome. 35 year old male. By the end of October, we had been hanging out for a little over six months, seeing each other one to three times a week and explicitly sexually exclusive. Classic situationship. It's the Friday night of Halloween weekend, October 27th. And I host a house party with all of my friends. The party was Barbie pink out. So the idea was to wear pink, super simple. People complained when I asked for costumes last year. Ugh. Everyone understood the assignment. Not, not awesome. Shows up super late in jeans and not pink. Bart Simpson sweatshirt. Ugh. Immediately upon arriving, he takes my drink away, saying I was too drunk. Okay, ew. You don't want to be the most fucked up person here. You're way more lit than your guests. After less than an hour at my house, he pulls me aside, tells me he's leaving to go catch up with the boys, and he'll come back when all of your guests have left. Ew. Not awesome. Gets back to my house at 2.30, 3 a.m. and butt me. Not my favorite, his favorite. Oh, boy. Is it ever the woman's favorite? I feel like never. When we go to sleep, I see him close out his apps on his phone. Next morning, he butt me again. Okay, this is that's not good. You can't. No, this guy's having a uh, a great. Yeah, you should tell him that, hours. You, you should tell him that you don't like. Bubba. I highly recommend. I mean, hopefully this person is in the past though. What a so run. You, don't, you don't gotta tell him. Uh, I get up, make us breakfast. We're chilling on the couch. I mean, watching. that was your mistake. You're yes, gonna it get, was. You're gonna make breakfast for someone who but. You twice in 24 twice? hours and left your party and didn't show up in costume. I See, the thing is, I was like, he was getting kicked out when he showed up not in pink. Uh, absolutely. No dress code to get kicked out. And then, oh, I'll show up later when none of your friends are here. Go f*** yourself. I mean, I would I would love to do that. I was taking notes on his for that. I'll, I'll do that to my uh, boyfriends in the future. Uh, I make us breakfast. We're chilling on the couch, watching TV, and I watch him close his apps, one of which is Tinder. Mm. This means he's busted in my... Is laying... So poetic. Is laying in my bed covered in my juices oh boy. and looking at girls Graphic. while I make him food. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You nailed it. Yeah, I chose to not say anything about this because I had planned to dump him after the Halloween party happening that night anyway. Why did you let him get two butts in when you were, ha- were thinking food? about a breakup? Two butts in breakfast? Oh my no, 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 Lord. No, my friend. Fast forward to later that Saturday evening, 1028, to the party at a hotel a good several miles away from where I live in Colorado. Our tickets were upgraded to VIP, Why is he coming with you? So we have a cross to bar. Oh, access. What the f*** is wrong with me? So we have access to an open bar that's in a hotel room suite, main party in lobby. He tells me to make him jealous. I hate this guy. I tell him that I do not want to make him jealous. I want him to make me jealous. Oh, he tells me to make him jealous. I tell him that I do not want him to make me jealous. Okay. I flirt with guys and girls alike, not to mention I am so f***ed up. Typically, my experience is to attend an event with someone I'm seeing, and we both flirt and are charming with others because we know we will go home together and each other. I am going to step in at this point and say it's like normally it's seen like I wouldn't like when he said when he took your drink away, but it seems like perhaps he did have your best interests. Not when he bucked you, but maybe when he took your drink away. Yeah. 
So we're in VIP, not a large hotel room at all. And he's talking to someone. I turn around to chat with a girl, waiting for him to wrap up and reconnect with me. Then I realize, damn, I've been talking to these people for a while. Where is this dude? I turn around and he was nowhere to be found. I circle the suite, nowhere. I check the hall, nope. I'm now dropping into absolute panic mode and I'm scared. Why? Why? Who the f- left? Um, a man is missing, you're fine. He's fine. I'm asking the bouncers and they're saying, oh, he came by like 15 minutes ago. I was, I think he was going out for a cigarette. I am so f-ed up, so I ditch my drink. Good. Walking around with literally only a whip on me. Oh, I'm now fully panicking about how I'm going to get home when he has my phone. Oh, oh that's why you care. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. That makes sense. With each passing minute, I'm also just growing the rage towards him for ditching me and leaving me when I was so fucked up. He's not your caretaker though also, okay? Can you imagine? That's very true. I've had guys like, you know, oh my God, this is an infamous story for my 21st birthday when my much older boyfriend got so fucked up on my 21st birthday that I couldn't get fucked up when that was literally why I flew us to Vegas. Well, he paid for it. I was like, that's why we went to Vegas and I was uh, so upset about that. At least he paid for it though. That's good at least. When I finally see him walking into the VIP suite from the main party, I charge at him from across the room, shoving him with all my might. Oh, that's dear. not that's not good. This is also And toxic. he fell back into a big planter. I'm screaming, "What the f- is wrong with you?" Okay, we but we you got to go to therapy, girl. "What the f- are you doing leaving me when I'm so f-ed up?" I was looking for you. I mean, that's a lie. You you're both you both need therapy. I continue to scream, but I was right there in the same room the whole time. Then my brain clicked and I realized what I had done. I've never laid a hand on anyone before and it freaked me out. Good, it should. So I immediately start apologizing. In retrospect, I'm also acknowledging that I was other people's crazy Halloween story. All right, Yes, you were. Okay, I love this honesty, love it. There's no way that half the people there didn't see this or hear me screaming at him. I don't love that I'm the one who looked crazy here. You would think this would have been enough for me, uh, for him to be on his best behavior the rest of the evening. Nah, really. So we reconnect and all of a sudden his liquor catches up to him and he's got to sit down. I just want to go dance so bad. The whole point for me of going to a party. He insists that I should go out and have my fun, but I'd be pissed if he ditched me when I was feeling awful. So I stayed seated next to him. Oh, Jesus. Shortly thereafter, it's 2 a.m. And they start rallying us out of the suite and we head out hand in hand with, with me following behind. When we step into the hotel hallway, he makes a turn, takes a few steps, drops my hand and leans against a wall opposite me right up on a girl. I stand there in utter utter shock and disbelief that this is even happening, let alone right in front of me. So I turn and walked away because I don't watch, I don't want to watch him hitting on a girl right in front of me. There was nowhere to go the direction that I walked. So I turned around and when I approached them again, she has his phone in her hand, jaw on the floor. I keep walking and I wait out in the lobby. I don't understand how somebody you don't care about anymore can be making you jealous at all. Like right. he obviously has some just, power over To me, you. I'm like, you just care about winning or he yeah. has some power over yeah, you. Yeah, like what is going on what is here? here? I finally see this woman leave. I'm sorry, but what is wrong with this chick? What is wrong with this chick? What's wrong with him? What's Hello? wrong with you? <laughs> yes, both of you, mother. Yeah, Situations sounding pretty Girl, bad. You're, <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is this is dumb bitch personified. Do you, do you know what I'm, like being a dumb bitch is going against yourself. When we call people dumb, don't be a dumb bitch. Or you were being a dumb bitch. That means you went against yourself. You you went against yourself in a lot, like so many times. The whole so time. Far. So I walk back to the hallway where not awesome is standing and screamed at him again. Oh, that'll help. What the is wrong with you? Did you really just ask for a girl's number while I was standing next to you? He responds, you were down the hall and we're open. But you're here with me, I say, and follow with, you know what this has done. I've been over here making you a part of my life and falling in love with you. How? And you while, uh, falling in love with you while I'm barely a piece of your life. Huh? See, that's, that's your bad girl. Huh? That's, that's your bad. But you were going to break up with him anyway. It seems like you just wanted to get through Halloween because it's important to you and you didn't want to do it single, which we've all done, but like be honest about what it is. What a yeah. night from hell. Uh, his response to me saying I loved him. Whoa, that's a big word. <laughs> I'm on this guy's side. I am too. <laughs> yeah, me three. We get to the car and he says he's too up to drive me home and lays down to take a nap. <laughs> Jesus. I end, guys, don't, don't, everybody's an alcoholic. We just put down the drink yeah. for a 
second, Jesus. Yeah, it's like if you if you if don't you, drink your problems away. That's and if you stupid. go out knowing that you're going to get fucked up, you need to either have a hotel room where you can stay for the night, set up for yourself, or a safe ride home. Yeah. Like you have to think I'm about assuming you're things. in an area that doesn't have like Uber readily available. Uh, we get in the car. He says he's too fucked up to drive me home, lays down to take a nap. I end up in the fetal position in the front seat sobbing. He sits up oh, and yeah, starts yeah, yelling yeah. excuses at me and trying to gaslight me about how my behavior justified him asking for that girl's number. Uh, she doesn't even matter. If she were standing here right in front of the car, I wouldn't even recognize her. Oh, great. Wow, you're both top notch. Not helping yourself, dude. You were all up on that bartender and ditched me on the couch to go flirt with him. So how is it fair that you're all mad about me getting a girl's number? Followed by a bunch of other hurtful nonsense. Mm -hmm. He lays back down and I move into an anxiety attack. Now fetal position but on the passenger seat floor. you seemingly caused yourself. Yeah, you did. Um, he sits back up and says, call an Uber. We'll split. Wait, there was Uber available the whole time? Well, they didn't, oh, they yeah, had their phone. car they didn't, and they didn't want to leave their car there. Most people, that's like, that's uh, the problem. Okay. They should have Ubered there yeah, as right. well. right. Call an Uber. We'll split it. Let's get you out of here. It's clearly not healthy for you to be around me. I ordered the Uber and on the way home realized I've left my keys, ID, and some oh other shit in his car. God. You got you got to drink less, girl. Okay? Oh, my God. You have to drink less. Oh, dear. Thank God I have a spare key uh, hid so I could get in my house, but this meant I had to see him again. Not awesome. Shows up to my house on Sunday, 1029, and doesn't even pull into the driveway. He is conveniently on the phone with his dad, so he can't talk. Honestly, good. And gives me $21 cash to cover his part of the Uber. I tell nice. him, yeah, I tell him no, literally insulting at this point. It doesn't matter. And don't give me money. He says, come on, take it. I told you I'd split the ride. Let me be a gentleman here. A gentleman? Really? More, really, more like a 40% a gentleman. The Uber was $45. I tip mine. Okay, now you're, you're focused being, on the wrong shit. Oh my God. You're you being are focused on absolutely the wrong shit. and ridiculous. You're saying it was insulting. And then you're, <laughs> then you're going down to the dollar that he didn't give you enough yeah, money. You are, Stop you it. are contradicting yourself left and right here. Stop you it. need. You need therapy. And look, that's not an insult. Everyone fucking needs therapy. Oh you God. really need it. Because you know what? Deep down, there is a functional person in you. I, I know that there is. So let's let's get her out. Let's introduce her to the world. Or reintroduce mm. her, rather. And you know what the kicker was of all of this? It was my fucking birthday. Okay. Uh, well, you're not going to forget it. In reflection, I seem to have a pattern of ending up with guys who supposedly adore me but won't make a commitment to me while I fall head over heels for them. Nothing about this guy's behavior said he adored you. No, yeah. not a one damn thing, girl. You are not present when you're in these relationships. As my hair stylist kindly pointed out, do you think you d keep dating emotionally unavailable men? Absolutely, seemingly, exclusively. How do you even screen for emotional availability in the first few dates? Well, well you're going to love our next week's episode. You have to be sober and emotionally available yourself yeah. and also uh, on the same page with yourself about what you want. You're saying this guy doesn't matter. You're in a situation ship. Then you're saying you love him. Like you're yeah, not, you're, you're you not being know what clear. you are. Yeah. This guy actually, I mean, I'm not I, saying I'm he's not, the best guy in the world, but I, he was that pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. told you who he is and what it was from what you're telling us, right? And you're and you're going back and forth wildly about what it was. You're saying it doesn't matter, and you don't love him. Like there's no clarity. This makes here. no sense. I'm confused. Yeah. Knowing that I really do want a relationship. There you I, go. There's the answer. <laughs> and my biggest turn on is intimacy. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> well, you're not acting like it. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm testing out some new boundaries. No raw dogging me unless one agreement <laughs> to both stop using dating apps. I hope you're 22. Otherwise this email is I fucking hope so too. Uh, two, <laughs> dude, if you're in your thirties, I'm so sorry. Go to therapy for Christmas. <laughs> this okay? is, I gotta be honest. This is one of the funniest that the, for her, her first boundary to be no raw dogging. That's, me. that's rough. That's I rough. I could not stop. I couldn't that's hold it rough. in. That's fine, Mike. We're, we, no, we, it's all right. It's okay. It's, yeah. You, you need to, I hope that you, the person who wrote this, I hope you're listening. But I, I mean, really I, hope you are. Even going really down to who, well, how oh. she dressed up for Halloween, right? You're looking for intimacy in a relationship and you're going out as dominatrix Barbie. Like, I, and that's not slut shaming. Like, I just think there's like, it seems to be a real disconnect. You're between putting on a lot what of What you want masks. and who you really are. Yes. And how you are presenting yourself to people in your life and the world. You're lying to yourself. You know? You're lying to yourself. And I don't know, you had, it's your job to find the truth. It's not anybody else's job except yours. Um, Okay, I'm testing out new boundaries. No raw dogging me unless one agreement to both stop using dating apps. It was funny Dude, the second that time should too. Be <laughs> It really is. No, you're right, Mike. You're right. That it shouldn't funny. even be on your list, dude. 
Ex- and right, then number, number two. Number one, no raw dogging. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Also, I hope when you're ta- you don't say it, raw dogging to the guys because they're not going to take you seriously if you were actually referred to it as raw dogging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, number two, oh. explicit monogamy in all senses of the word. Well, that's good because it seems like that's what you want. Although I would say don't fucking date until you've been to therapy for a while. Okay. Uh, number three, a relationship label. I would say number one should be therapy, okay? Uh, This was more of a therapeutic writing for me, but I hope you got some entertainment out of it. Oh, we did. The bar is on the floor, ladies. More stories to come. Well, I hope no more stories to come because I hope you go to therapy. And also in this email, I feel feel like you wrote us this email trying to- Ha ha, I'm a hot mess. Isn't that funny? Well, and also to showcase, oh, look at at these dirt bags I date. It's all these guys' problems. When we read that email, it's actually mostly your problem. You are the fucking problem here. And you have to accept that. Don't feel fucking bad for yourself, girl. Stop it. Stop drinking. Stop. Sorry. Yeah. She said that he dumped her that night. Did I have? Who she the fuck that knows what happened? I don't even know. Yeah, right. I I don't even know. Because I, I don't. Think, I didn't. I didn't. They, she, I don't think she got to the part where he, like, formally and also, dumped her. Who the hell knows how that night really went? When when you were that drunk, I'm sure there was some like brownout or something happening. Like, who knows? Dude, you got it. You got to chill. You got to chill. That shit is not cute. No. It's not cute. That was it's not. It's not. Good. Ha ha. I don't and if like you have friends email. in your life that are like ha 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 crazy, they're bad friends. Do you understand me? They're bad friends. Okay. It's the season of Christmas. And I'm here to tell you that the best gift that you can give yourself is mother therapy and meditating and putting down the goddamn alcohol. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I'm so mad mad at you, but I am. (laughs) That was a rather unaware email. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But you, I, you know what I'm, I know I'm mad at you because you have a wonderful human being in there that's ready to explore the world and be curious and set goals for herself and do all these beautiful things. And you're just wasting that opportunity. Mm. That's why I'm mad at you. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's because I care. And there's plenty of reasons. I'm mad at you because there's plenty of reasons to be <laughs> mad at men, but that wasn't one of that them. That was not even close. Man. I love being mad at men, but that yeah. wasn't that wasn't it. Yeah, no, it yeah. wasn't it. Hey, uh, speaking of being mad at men, come see us live. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, so we have a co- three shows coming up that Corinne and I are doing um, together, which is very exciting. The first one is New Year's Eve. This is the rundown. Yeah, Corinne Fisher's Morbid New Year's Eve, December 31st, New York Comedy Club, East Village, 6 p.m. Perfect way. I know, oh, Corinne, that's early. Yeah, you, New Year's Eve starts exactly. early. And if you know, don't know that, you're not doing New Year's Eve uh, right. So you go, you sh- show up, you have a couple cocktails at New York Comedy Club, East Village. You enjoy the show. It's me, it's Christina Hutchinson, yeah. John Campanelli, Justin Silver, Ryan Long, Chloe LeBranch. Going to be so fun. This show was so killer last year, if anyone was there. So fun. Wow, we tell fucked up jokes um, to end the year. And then you go on to whatever you're going to do next. Um, ticket link is up for that on the New York Comedy Club website, on my link tree at Philanthropy Gal on Instagram or on uh, X slash Twitter. It's all there. Then moving on to February, we have some shows in both New York and LA. If- yes, February 1st, New York City. It's our first Guys We Fucked Live at the MasterCard Midnight Theater uh, in New York City. So make sure you come to that February 1st. I Ticket link is live for that. It's a yes, Thursday. It's in our bios. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then motherfucking Los Angeles. Los what are you Angeles. Doing? What are you doing for Valentine's Day? That's our, that's the guys who fuck national holidays, mm-hmm. Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. And we want to invite you to come see us co-headline the main room at the Comedy Store. It is going to be an evening to remember. Come by yourself. Come with a bunch of friends. Come with well, the person Well, we're doing guys we fucked live. That one. Are we doing? That's, I believe that's what they booked. So I think okay, that's what we sweet. have to do. Hell yeah. <laughs> fucking sick. So it will be like come a- see us. Guys Guys, we fucked experience kind of show. That'd oh, be, perfect. We oh, haven't done fun. that since like 2018 that'll in be LA. Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they, that comedy festival under that tent. Yeah. That was really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a fun fucking show, guys. Yeah, this will be super, super fun. Uh, and then me, Christina, I have some solo headlining gigs coming up. New Brunswick, New Jersey, January 4th through the 6th, The Stress Factory. I'm headlining Hasbro Heights, New Jersey at Bananas, February 9th and 10th. Springfield, Missouri, March 22nd and 23rd. I'm going to be headlining the Blue Room. Uh, all ticket links are in my bio in, in uh, social on the social media pages. And Patreon, once a, once a week, I host uh, group Zoom therapy, and it's, it's fucking great, okay? I think that girl should come. Uh, but, you know, I totally understand if you don't want to. Um, you could sign up by going to patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. That link is also in my bio. And then I have a solo podcast called The Voices in Our Heads, where I dive into uh, a self-help book uh, every episode that I'm really loving. And uh, this past week it was um, The Way We Live is the Way We Die. Pretty sure that was what it was called. It was Pema Chodron. Uh, and it was a great book. And I also had my friend Ollie on. And it was really fun. So you can listen to that anywhere you get your podcasts. Wait, are you not are you not promoting your January live date yet or no? 
The, wait, what? Oh, fuck, I forgot. There's so many things. I'm so, oh gosh. Yes, thank you so much for that. Wait, what? I fucking totally forgot. I'm so, cause I'm so excited for that. Um, wait, what? January 20th is a Saturday. I'm so, so, so excited. Daniel Pinchback is an author and he's my co-host of Wait, What? That is a show all about things that completely defy what you thought was real in the world. So aliens, ghosts, the healing power of psychedelic medicine, all that kind of shit. And on Saturday, January 20th, we have our premiere show. It's going to be a live show. And I highly encourage if you're in New York City that date, get a ticket. The link is not up yet, but it will be up soon, probably after Christmas. Um, uh, we want to do a town hall thing at the end of the show where anybody who has experiences with like a crazy psychedelic experience or if they have spiritual powers, if they could talk to ghosts, talk to dead people, or if you've been abducted by aliens or you've had experiences with aliens, we want to hear from you. I want to hear that, from that too. Yeah, Specifically that, if you've been abducted by aliens. Honestly, me too. There's a lot of people, there's more people you th than you would assume that have claimed to have been abducted by aliens. And I got to say, I want to hear your fucking stories. I want to hear them. Um, and so we're doing a live show. I think it's going to be 8.30 p.m. And our special guest is motherfucking John Ronson. My fiance. And, yes, Grant's no, fiance. No, he's married. <laughs> um, <laughs> And he has so many stories about like witchy ghost shit. And he's like very giddy and excited to share them, which I cannot wait. It's gonna be, it's gonna be one of the best nights ever. So you should come on down. Thank you for that reminder, Chris. You got <laughs> it. And then uh, Washington, DC, I'm headlining the DC Comedy Law February 29th through March 2nd. You guys have known about that for a while. And I know it's hard, you know, in 2023 to buy tickets for 2024, but I would say time time is now. I haven't checked on ticket sales. Who knows? Maybe they're great. I, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, but buy tickets for that. The link is up in the link tree at Philanthropy Gal and also at, uh, on Instagram and on X slash Twitter and threads and wherever you have access access to me. Um, too much perhaps. Um, <laughs> and then there, again, I'll, I'll, I have a limited amount of, uh, tour dates coming up in 2024, but I will be going to other places other than LA. Uh, and obviously check out a gash slasher comedy, uh, at the comedy store in LA to dates will be forthcoming for that. And if you want to hear me on my solo podcast, uh, about news, social issues, that kind of thing, we talk a lot about domestic violence, animal welfare, but we're, it's, you know, it's fun. It's not, it's not too serious. Like we're talking about serious things. It's a little more serious than guys we fucked, but it's still, you know, I, I'm still talking about it with a comedian's voice. So I feel like it's, uh, accessible to anyone. We're not trying to do highbrow collegiate, uh, collegiate work here. It's not academia. Um, so check out without a country. It comes out on YouTube every Wednesday night. I, I do recommend watching the video version, but of course we have, uh, all audio versions too on luminary and Apple and Spotify and wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, and I highly recommend us starting to think about the 2024 presidential election now and, and looking into who's going to be running the issues that matter to you because uh, that'll be around before you know it. If you don't vote, you can't complain. Mm -hmm. um, guys, uh, our guest. Yeah. He's just fantastic. We're so excited. He's a stand-up comedian, very mother funny motherfucker, and he has a comedy special that's available now for you to watch called The Blue-Eyed Mexican. It's on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Shane, Shane Torres. Torres. 